arms folded like this. You're very cool. For as cozy a show as MasterChef is, there have been more than a few contestants that had a nasty attitude. And were downright atrocious, too. And the first person who comes to mind is this contestant from season 10. In episode 3, the home cooks each earned an apron, and now they had to fight to keep it. Welcome to your culinary boot camp tonight. I'm going to be your drill sergeant. But of course, they weren't seasoned pros, so a boot camp was in order. Ramsey gave them a lesson on cooking essentials, demonstrating the proper way to chop vegetables, work with fresh ingredients, and fillet a fish. Clearly, these are staple skills that people should have. You can talk a great game. Well, let's see if that confidence of his is well-founded or not. Anyway, in past seasons, plenty of home cooks made it to the show only to fail at the basics. And no one wanted a repeat of that, so you can't blame the judges for weeding them out early this time around. But if you can't master the basics, you cannot call yourselves a master chef. And all of this wasn't just for show, because there was a practical exam at the end. Another reason why the judges were tough from the start was because of the practice itself serving as an immunity challenge. Contestants had just 10 minutes to dice three onions, fillet a fish, and separate three dozen eggs. Preparation has to look professional. If it's not good enough to use in one of my restaurants, then I have no use for you in this. Is that a promise, Joe? Uh, well, you, you know I'm joking, right? Anyway, the quickest and most accurate participant would earn immunity from the elimination challenge. What a way to separate the cooks from the chefs, and it's a first chance for all of us. Naturally, no one wanted to risk cooking in that high-pressure round, so some shortcuts were taken. The fish off there, you know, the inside, yeah. not good. Many failed their first challenge, knowing they would have to cook later on. Can't bake with that. So you're staying down here. Okay. But Evan? The dice on his onions was completely inconsistent. Small, Stop, smaller on the bottom, be, they yeah. get bigger on top. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Mouthing off to Joe at the first possible moment. That's a good trick. Bit mangled. We didn't get too many of these, huh? What's more, he actually admitted that he wasn't capable of even doing the basics. Seeing the onions, the fish on the fish, and the yolks. If you ask me, Evan stood out by challenging the judge's decision and arguing for his unique approach. Ultimately, the judge's decisions were based solely on what they could observe and assess. And that's how Evan joined nine others in their first mystery box challenge, which contained not just one protein, but specifically a choice of three of Ramsey's favorites. Tonight's dish should be inspired by me and my personality. Yeah, no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> or it could be sour. <laughs> I think everyone got the memo. Fast forward a bit, and Evan found himself in the bottom five. Anyone here shocked about that? I know I'm not. That's the noise I want to hear. Exactly. Chop, 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 chop. Now, well, harissa rub pork chop with smash fingerling potatoes and cipollini onions sounds good on paper. Those are beautiful textbook. That's Please get upstairs to that balcony. Thank you guys. It's got a look textbook too. The pressure of being in this like kitchen definitely wears on your nerves. But honestly, that wasn't even its biggest problem. Effort? No. A little bit deficiency in the onions. Despite being subpar, he was massively deluded about how good he actually was. I've got knife skills, I've got the technical chops, I should be guaranteed immunity. Now, Evan's occasional backtalk during judging, disagreeing with the judges or quietly protesting, was still somewhat mildly bearable. Like making an omelet or cooking a steak where you touch it and you feel it, there's a science. But that defiance escalated into full-blown defensiveness soon enough. And in episode 6, he wasn't content to limit that attitude to just one judge. It wasn't that good, I wouldn't be here. Okay. Thankfully, he was wise enough to at least leave Ramsey out of it. No, this all got started when Aron and Joe questioned him about his approach to cooking a Chipotle spice skirt steak during the Latin-inspired challenge. Evan mentioned that he intended to sear the steak in a non-stick pan, prompting Joe to suggest otherwise. You want to make the best dish possible, you got to use the appropriate equipment. And Aron agreed with that sentiment. They heat better, and they also give you a better char. This the is first, the first steak I cooked you, gentlemen. I don't know. I feel like it'd take less effort to say, yes, chef, and move on. 
But no, the dude stood his ground. But you can't say that Arone didn't give him fair warning. You don't have to bust our balls, okay? Rather than refocusing on his dish, Evan made one final jab by boasting about his experience cooking well over a hundred skirt steaks. Cooked well over a hundred pounds of skirt steak in my day. Weird flex, but okay. But that wasn't the end of it. Because next, Joe dropped a little bit more wisdom on the guy. Or something. As in life in the MasterChef kitchen, the that you dole out will come back at you. But Evan over here had already chosen the hill that he wanted to die on. And apparently, that was his choice of pan. I definitely don't want to eat I know what I'm doing. I don't need a cast iron pan. But even after all of that drama, Evan's dish ended up impressing the judges the most that night. Show you what I can do. I'm comfortable with these ingredients. I use Good. these ingredients on a regular basis. I've cooked well over 100 pounds of skirt steak in my day. And nobody could deny that. The only thing that kept him from winning immunity, yep, all that pan back talk of his. I'm gonna keep the head on the prawns because I'm a huge fan of breaking that open, sucking the juice out of that head. So we're gonna have a little serve and turf with a roasted- Big ego equals a poor listener. I can't put it any more simply than that. Anyway, let me move on to season 10, episode 7, before my brain explodes here. Shari, Nick, and Wuda had cooked their way to the balcony, leaving everyone else to face elimination. And the challenge? A tart tatan. A classic French pastry. And a notoriously fussy one at that. But at least it wasn't a souffle, right? Thankfully, Ramsey demonstrated the technique, which came as a relief for most. After a painstakingly long procedure, Ramsey finally finished things off by adding cognac to the pan, flambéing it, and pouring the still flaming liquor over the tart. And for all my love for the guy's skills, the question was, would the home cooks be able to replicate it? Well, with only 60 minutes to do it, they had their work cut out for them. Right away, Katura was stressed. She was not comfortable with desserts and entered the competition already panicking. Feeling really anxious. Never actually made a tart tatin before. To make matters worse, she hoped to use peaches, but by the time she reached the pantry, all the peaches were gone. She ended up having to settle for pineapple instead. I'm fairly familiar with is a pineapple. I've used it in curries and sauces. But Ramsey tried to warn her away from using it and to choose literally anything else, except peaches, I guess. Bloody brave. Nobody else is doing pineapple. In fact, one's doing pineapple. Okay. Yeah, she was about to break down after realizing her mistake. However, Ramsey helped lift her spirits by encouraging her to push through the pressure and try her best. We're going to go with it now. Pull this one off. You will not be going home. Okay? Do not crumble under pressure. Meanwhile, Evan had the exact opposite response. He admitted that he knew nothing about tarts, but felt very confident regardless. And for as dumb as that sounds, don't worry. His deep knowledge base was going to save the day. Sure, buddy. The world, I know about a ton of ingredients, so I'm feeling like really confident and I'm super excited. And that's when Joe and Aron stop by Evan's station for yet another tense and awkward interaction. Evan tried to lighten the mood with a joke about having plenty of package, but the attempt fell flat as Aron and Joe simply stared at him in silence. You have to be a complete package. I got plenty of package. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to say either. To make matters worse, he cut Joe off again and kept insisting that he would be fine. That's not gonna help you tonight. You need to know what- I spent a little time with them learning some tips. I think Joe met his match in cockiness with this guy, and honestly, it was kind of refreshing. Anyway, leave it to her own to cut the tension by asking, you know, what he was planning on making, you know, what spin he wanted to put on it, etc., etc. But he surprised them by opting for a traditional apple tart tatan. It's gonna be uh, an apple tartan. He then indicated that he intended to improvise when asked about his approach to the creme anglaise. Fly by the seat of my pants. Uh, anyway, yeah, Evan. Thank you. But for as awkward as that second bout of silence was, well, our man here claimed to be not bothered at all. I'm not worried in the least. I'm gonna blow right through this thing. Here we had a whole room of humble chefs trying to learn and do their best, and then there was him. 
I don't need Gordon's step-by-step -step instructions. I can knock out awesome dishes with what I got up here. Yeah, the confidence that this guy had was next level. Anyway, when it was time for tasting, he presented his apple tart to tan with a thyme creme anglaise. And wouldn't you believe it, it was even more boring flavor-wise than it sounded. It looks like a tart fin. It's like you've got puff paste with sliced apples on there. When Ramsay asked if he, you know, listened to him about how thin to slice the apples, this is what Evan had to say. I cored and quartered the apples. Quartered, quartered. It seemed Evan misunderstood that a quarter is smaller than a half. Man, was this the guy that got the third pounder pulled from the McDonald's menu? Never ever retain any form of structure whilst caramelizing. I didn't cut mine into quarters. Ugh, seriously though, so much for not needing Ramsey's instructions, huh? And then when questioned about how long he baked it, Evan replied it was about 22 minutes. So to summarize, he sliced his apples thinner than intended and baked it for longer. Hmm. Do you I, drive I, without looking at the speedometer? I, <laughs> I don't drive that often living in the city. As much as I hate Joe, I can't say he didn't see right through the guy. The judges informed him that while his crust was good and it wasn't a bad apple dessert, it just wasn't a tart to tan. Nothing. There's no caramel. Nothing. Where is it? Overcooked apples and no caramel will do that to you. For me, is that beautiful balance of having it caramelized and also having a little bite to it. Despite this critique, though, Evan expressed that he would be genuinely surprised if he was sent home here. Going home would literally be shocking. I don't want to go home. Now, let's talk about Fred. It's not a non sequitur, I promise. So he wasn't evil here, but I think his dish warrants comparison. And a little something else, too. He presented a ginger, vanilla, and cinnamon apple tart to tan with brown butter and cardamom creme anglaise. Unfortunately, it was unevenly cooked, with some parts of the dough browned and others raw. Here, it's caramelized here. It's in balance. It's kind of structurally, it fell apart. Joe even said that it resembled applesauce. Applesauce. I don't like it at all. It's not the cake we want. Well, Ramsey appreciated the flavors, he wasn't pleased with the dish's appearance. I like the flavor. You've got that right. Unfortunately, it doesn't look decent. Personally, I expected more from you. Now, here's the comparison. Fred knew he fucked up and was aware of his shortcoming. After hearing the judges' critiques, I'm basically saying my goodbyes to everyone. I and with the two of these guys in the bottom, well, two, you know who went home? Evan. And here's the difference. Fred was thankful to the judges and remarked that he was trying to learn. Him suggesting that might be why the judges chose to keep him over Evan is completely fair. Trying to learn, which I think is probably the one reason why they saved me over Evan. Because he was right. Ramsey always talks about how important it is to be open to learning. Meanwhile, Evan was resistant to advice even on a good day. Master Chef, we need a incredible pupil. And even in defeat, Evan said that it ultimately didn't matter. He believed his experience and knowledge base, there's that damn phrase again, made him the best chef in the competition. I still feel like my experience and my knowledge base means that I was the best chef in this competition. Not exactly the best way to depart if you're asking me, but oh, he'd be back before long on freaking Reddit, that is. Yeah, he was getting in the comments over there too. He said, they even said my dish with whole cast iron incident was top six overall. Then I got cut on the tart. If you look at all the tarts from that episode, I was nowhere close to the worst. I mean, maybe delete that space between no and where, and then we can talk, dude. But what made it worse was how he genuinely believed that he got typecast into playing the heel. But Oxy Genius over here said what we're all thinking. That was just his personality, not the edit. But oh, this dude did not know when to quit. I'll give you that. But when I got sent home, it was a whole lot of sound bites taken from multiple days, making me out to seem more arrogant and aloof. I'm confident, but not a total ass. He also said that the days are really long for a single episode. 
That's why some cast members break down in tears, look flustered, or in his case, get a bit crass with the judges. He also mentioned that he was trying to make seven components for a dish while the judges were more worried about his choice of pan. At the time, he just wanted them to leave him alone, but looking back, he realizes he should have been more tactful. And now, I'm gonna need your thoughts on this, because I did not expect to have to deal with a full-blown Reddit argument when I started researching this video, let alone with an actual cast member. But I mean, I am talking about evil chefs, so maybe that's on me. Well, moving on. How many of you hate season seven's winner, Sean? Sean, a 33 year old DJ from Las Vegas, Nevada. Seriously, just rewatched the finale. He strutted out his appetizer like it was the best thing since sliced bread. But when the chefs tore into him, he threw a hissy fit like a toddler. One thing you never ever do is pickle a morel mushroom. Fair enough. See, there's a big difference between confidence and arrogance. Sean wasn't confident at all. He was just piling on ingredients, hoping one would end up impressing. He didn't even really stick to one cooking style during the season, but for some reason, he decided to go the Asian route for the finale. It felt so inauthentic. Why is this so complicated? Chef, have you known me to not take a risk? Yeah, but the three course. Right after he realized he messed up his app, he went into full on ass kissing mode for the rest of the finale. Standing there, shaking back and forth, fake crying and dragging out pictures of his dad. It was all so fake. Everyone could see through that BS. This is my father. I lost my dad a few years ago. By the way, he also crossed a line by being that guy who turned light teasing into mean-spirited insults. And then, of course, he behaved poorly towards the judges during the finale. His attempt to dismiss his arrogance as passion was weak. It was evident he wasn't interested in Wolfgang and Daniel's feedback. His body language said it all. Crossed arms, a defiant look, and talking over the judges too. Gotta love that one. Now you tried very hard. You, you guys told me to put myself on a plate, know, and that's what I did. And they even said that what he made was amateurish. However, tastes nowhere near as good as it looks. Now, is he talented? Sure. Is he as talented as he believes? Not a chance. If he were, he wouldn't have made any mistakes ever. Well, moving on to another argumentative chef, Jeff from season eight. Oh, standard-wise. I don't, actually, and we're gonna get right. to the first order. Dare send me your again. Yeah, they somehow managed to clone Jeff from season one of Hell's Kitchen. When you send me that, and then tell me that that's your best. Point. That's not my best. I never... Ooh, maybe just ask Giovanni from Hell's Kitchen season five how this is gonna end. You can't be yelling at Chef Ramsay like that. You need to show him some respect. No kidding, Dino. In the family reunion theme mystery box challenge, the final six contestants were tasked with creating a savory protein dish inspired by their loved ones. Jeff was the first to leave the pantry and was greeted by his fiance and son. Jeff, that is your amazing fiance and your baby. Anyway, he decided to make a soy glazed salmon over a miso, ginger spice, and garlic cauliflower puree, paired with lemon herb creme fraiche and pickled radishes with Asian pears. Despite his heartfelt effort, Jeff's dish did not make it to the top entries. And then, during the elimination challenge, which ironically ended up being a salmon run back for him, Kate gave him just 20 minutes to try again. Why 20 minutes to Jeff? His attitude is poor, so I want to send him home. Now, here's the most important part. Kate confirmed to Ramsey that she specifically chose Jeff for the shortest time due to his poor attitude. Jeff saw it differently, obviously, and made sure to go all out, even with the time crunch looming over him. He served a Mediterranean-style salmon with feta cheese and sun-dried tomato relish over an apple and cucumber gratin with cranberry and stout beer. Now, Jeff said that it was going to be medium rare, but well, let's see how well that turned out for him. Cook on the salmon is what? Medium rare, but going more towards a rare. Ramsey then tasted the fish, surprisingly, but given it tasted like sushi, that must have helped him make the logical leap in his mind. But leave it to Jeff to snarkily clap back, claiming he wanted it rare, and justified it by saying at least it had crispy skin. 
But Ramsey knew better. And of course he did, considering Jeff said he intended it to be medium rare seconds earlier. And even if that was how he intended to serve his dish, raw salmon, cucumber, and apple gratin, and feta cheese just don't work together. Anyway, Jeff was the second home cook called up for elimination, along with Yashika. Ramsey criticized Jeff for cooking like he didn't care and delivering a lackluster performance, too. Right when Ramsey announced that Yashika would be eliminated, he also sent Jeff packing for everything that Kate had told him about at the beginning of the challenge. Oh, and the nasty sashimi that he was slinging, too. Hard to get through to you, and we felt that we just can't teach you anymore because you're not prepared to listen. At the very end, Jeff finally felt humbled and acknowledged that he had an amazing journey with his competitors. He felt that his cooking had been elevated to a new level, recognized that he rubbed some of his fellow chefs the wrong way in the process, but claimed he did the best he could. I don't know if I can take the guy seriously here. Not after the way he talked to everyone at the very end of the competition. Well, get in the comments with how you're feeling about this. And while you're down there, don't be shy about liking and subscribing. It really helps me get more of my stuff out to all of you. But until next time, go ahead and check out this next video right here.